I'm happy to be here. Ambassador, also very interested to hear about the discussions and work going on in Finland. We, we aren't as far as, as you are in terms of being, you are much more concrete in terms of looking already at different model, models you have scheduled it, uh, for, for government decision. We, of course, have now this, uh, this public vote coming up on the 5th of June. We are in the last run-up to this vote. Uh, and we actually have been very surprised the kind of intention uh, this initiative received in Switzerland. Not only in Switzerland, it has been also covered uh, quite widely by the press and media <coughs> abroad. Uh, a compliment to the committee of the initiative. We have one representative here who, will, who were able to stimulate this dis discussion in, in Switzerland. The government and the parliament certainly wants to recognize that it is a very important discussion about the values of our society, about the development of our society, and also about how we might uh, meet future challenges in the economic sector uh, in terms of demographic changes and so on. However, the government thinks that we are not ready yet for this kind of initiative and this kind of model in Switzerland. And I will explain you in brief words why. Before I was asked to give a very rough overview of the Swiss system on social security and I want to do this very briefly. If the slides are coming up. Uh, obviously the, the Swiss social security system has been developed over the last 150 years. We have quite a strong uh, social security system with different pillars on all age survivors and invalidity insurances, unemployment insurances. We have uh, the, obviously the uh, different protection schemes against uh, the consequences of illness and accidents. There are income compensation allowances in case of care services or in care case of maternity leave. There are certain uh, family allowances and certain social assistance allowances. Now the specific of Switzerland is also that it is a very federal country, meaning that all the social security schemes we have national law, but for all the other allowance, allowances it's up to the 26 uh, regional authorities to determine what kind of allowances they are going to pay to their citizens. Uh, we have different types of benefits uh, along with those uh, social security systems. I might go on. And uh, just to, to show a, a, a little breakdown, of course, the most important one are the old age benefits. And they have been decreasing over the last 20 years because of the demographic changes. I just read today in the newspaper that. Uh, it is uh, foreseen that we will have in 10 or 20 years from now an increase of 80% of the old age population receiving old age benefits. That just shows kind of the challenges we are going to meet in the future. Go on to the next one. Uh, maybe just some, some remarks to our social security network, which is built on very different types of uh, insurances on means-tested benefits. We obviously have a very strong focus on social security. If you look at, at the different type of welfare models, we are more part of the continental model like uh, Germany and France with those strong social security types. Uh, Complementary to the legal system, we have uh, voluntary benefits by the state, but also by uh, private companies in different areas. The social benefits covering are all of the population. And this is just to underline what I've said. Uh, the financing of our social security system is mostly done not by state contributions, by tax money, but by contributions of the uh, insured and the employees. That just uh, underlines uh, what I've said about the strong focus on social security. Uh, coming to the to the initiative, uh, this has been the start of the campaign uh, in front of our parliament in Bern, uh, which we think was a very good start of the campaign. Uh, I just wanted to explain very briefly what the initiative is all about. It demands from the state that there is an 
basic in conditional, and that's very important, uh, without any conditions, uh, basic income to all of the citizens living in Switzerland. Uh, there's no clear demand yet on how, what would be the exact amount of such an income, neither how it could be financed. Of course, we had to think about how could this model work, how could it be financed, and I'm just going to show how that could be. In our, we always have to publish a booklet to our people so they get an overview of this initiative. In that book, booklet, you would find this graphic, which is explaining how would it work. I mean, there, there could be other models, but this is uh, the one we, we have been discussing in Switzerland. Uh, two case models, one person who is already participating at the labor market having an income of 6,000 Swiss francs, there wouldn't be a change, there wouldn't be no change for this person because he would need to distribute part of his income to a kind of uh, basic income scheme and he would receive the same amount back. We estimated in agreement with the committee from the initiative that we need to talk about a basic income amount of 2,500 Swiss francs according to the kind of living costs we have in Switzerland for adults and 625 Swiss francs for children. So a family with two adults and two children would have an income of around 6,000 Swiss francs in total. And basic income would change, of course, the situation for a person who is having an who is having no income at all. And let's see the second example shown here on the graphic that uh, a person having no income at all, neither from wage nor from social benefits, he, he or she then would have a basic income of 2,500 Swiss francs. Now looking off the side of the finances, how could such a system, how could such a model be financed? We estimate if we run such a system for Switzerland, we would, would have a total cost per year of uh, 208 billion Swiss francs. That would be the costs on the cost side. How could that be financed? We believe that we, uh, the largest chunk of the finances would need to come from the workforce, from the people who are working and from the employers, and that would cover 128 billion Swiss francs. We certainly would have savings in the current si system of social security and social benefits. We probably wouldn't need any social benefits allowances anymore. We would save on all pension benefits, on unemployment benefits and so on. But it still wouldn't cover all the social benefits we have at the moment. So some people use the basic income scheme as an argument that the system would be much simpler than it is now. That's not true, because it's still only in basic income. We still would need to run other social benefits. But we would make them safety, and it's estimated to 55 billion Swiss francs. But we still have, uh, after this calculation, and it certainly is only a rough calculation, we still would have a finance gap of 25 billion Swiss francs, and we would need to raise taxes to cover that uh, yeah, for example, the value added tax, uh, we would need to increase it from 8% as it is now to around 16% in the future. So, why is the government and the parliament as well rejecting this initiative? Simply because we say it's too risky and the risky are hardly to calculate. There's no model we can look at where such a scheme has been implemented in a country or in a country similar to Switzerland. And we think it will be posing risk to three or four main areas. To our economic in Switzerland, because we don't know what this such an income scheme would make to the people living and working in Switzerland. Would they continue living and working as they do at the moment, or would they rather choose to have other, other models of living? Would they uh, choose to go rather into part-time modes or other uh, uh, activities? So we don't know what kind of changes this would impose on the economy. The second thing is we don't know how our social security system would need to be changed. 
and that's probably one of the main arguments. We have a very robust, a very good uh, social security system, although it is quite complex, sometimes quite complicated, although it has certain uh, areas where it needs improvement, but in the overall it's running quite well. We don't know what kind of changes we would uh, do on our social security system. And the third thing, uh, there's a certainty about the social cohesion in Switzerland. Our current society model and social security system is built on many, many agreements which we achieved in public growth. And this would a total new way of organizing our society, our way of living, and our social security system. Thank you very well, and I uh, suppose we'll have a very interesting discussion later on.